Good morning, everyone. Am I not on? Check, 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 check. There we go. Uh, good morning, everyone. How are you? Praise the Lord. Uh, this is a day of reflection in so many ways for us uh, as we celebrate All Saints Day. And you will hear more about that later in the service today. But as we reflect upon God's goodness in our lives, we're starting a series today over the next three weeks as we celebrate the goodness of God in our lives. Amen. From Psalm 107. Uh, for those of you who are on the uh, church app, I was able to send out a message to several people this morning and let them know to invite your family and your friends and so forth because we're going to do a deep dive into Psalm 107 over the next several weeks and talk about God's goodness. Um, I don't know about you, but I'm just so grateful for an extra hour of sleep this morning. Amen. Amen. Even though I didn't get an extra hour of sleep, I was glad that it existed, okay? And uh, grateful that you decided to get up and join us this morning about the comfort of your bed. But this is the day that the Lord has made. And we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. God bless you as we enter into our time of worship and fellowship together today. On this All Saints Day, we gather to join the multitudes of saints across the generations from all tribes, peoples, and languages to proclaim salvation, salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. We come to remember, to grieve, and to celebrate those saints who have come before, yet whose life and witness continues to teach us To our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. May we be guided today by the Lamb, who is our shepherd, the one who gathers us, comforts us, and tends us. May we honor and yet as a shepherd to bring about a world with no more hunger, no more thirst, no more suffering, and no more pain that all the saints of the past, present, and the future share in God's abundant life. Amen. So All Saints Day, also called All Hallows Day, or Hallow Mass, or Feast of All Saints in the Christian Church, a day commemorating all the saints of the church, both known and unknown, who have attained heaven. Now, I want you to know that I do not celebrate ghosts and goblins and, you know, and, and all of those friendly ghosts or not. Uh, but I do celebrate those who have left legacies of righteousness and holy living and those who have gone on before us. That's a good place to say amen, amen. And so today we commemorate with those. And oftentimes in the Christian church, you know, we find things to find differences with one another, and the quote-unquote state of the dead is one of those things in which we allow to be an issue sometimes between denominations and people groups and so forth. And I've just never met anybody who left here and came back to tell us what it really is. But I do know that there are promises in the Bible about the promise of the resurrection and the sacrifices that Christ has made in our behalf. I also recognize that as I have become older, Kim, that my thoughts about what happens after this life have altered because I pray, oh God, I pray that all of these truths in which I read in the Bible are just true because there are wonderful promises about heaven and being glorified from being justified by being sanctified and then living glorified. And I thank God that in Christ Jesus, whether that happens immediately or whether that happens some years from now, that it happens. Amen. That, that it happens. And so today, we celebrate all saints. All saints um, knowing, as Scripture says, that absent from the body is present with the Lord. And there you go. I'm, I'm, I'm keeping my friend with me over there. That absent from the body is present with the Lord. 
That's the time to ring the first time. There you go. And these are the names that we shall remember this day. Bud Smith, the husband of Dottie Smith. David Sisner, the husband of Ed Sisner. Chris McVeigh, son of Helen McVeigh, brother of Kim Skidmore and Kurt McVeigh. David Bancroft, husband of Beth Ulmer. Betty Oswalt, mother of Phil Oswalt. John Anderson, longtime member of St. Paul's UMC. Doris Coonrod, longtime member of Del Rosa UMC. Reginald Uduhiri, brother of Carolyn Eke. Felix Okanimi, family friend of Kenneth and Caroline Eke. Elva Rainey, aunt of Cindy Wainwright. June Jesse Schultz, friend of Cindy Wainwright. Brad Lusk brother of Rick Wainwright's sister-in-law. Father, because through your son, Jesus Christ, and because Christ lives, we celebrate the plan of salvation. We celebrate eternal life. We celebrate that you are God and you have made a way of escape from sin and death and pain. We glory in who you are, and we thank you for the precious gift of eternal life. In Christ's name we pray, amen and amen. Sorry. <laughs> and join me in the opening prayer. Loving and Loving generous, generous God, God, we come, we come to, to you hungry, hungry and thirsty for your, for your word. word. Satisfy, Satisfy our hunger, hunger. Quench, quench our thirst, thirst. nourish our, our soul. soul. Teach us to listen and heed all your promises and receive the abundance of your inexhaustible grace. We pause to remember the faithfulness of your servants and your generations from all peoples in all languages who shared in word and deed the many wonders of your love and grace. And now with words of hope in our hearts, we again respond to your call to carry the good news of Jesus Christ in all languages, beginning here in our communities, across all borders, and unto the ends of the earth. Send us in the power of your Holy Spirit to join your mission of bearing witness to your Son, our Lord, who in the humble Nazarene synagogue announced, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Amen. We just take a moment and reflect upon the words of this song. Keep playing, band. It's okay. Yeah. 
thou fount of every blessing. As we talk about the goodness of God, we have to remember the fountain from which it flows. That Jesus Christ and Calvary's cross is the foundation and the fountain from which every blessing comes. And instead of us being hard-headed and difficult and wandering from the things of God, we come to a place to yield and to surrender and say, God, not my will, but thy will be done. Thy will. And once we get to that place, then we celebrate who he is because he is both Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning of all things and the end of all things. He is the Alpha and the Omega. transition. You are Alpha and Omega. You are Alpha and Omega. it now let's do it together that you are Alpha. Let's get
give the glory one more time. you. We magnify you. We lift you up. Because believing is so much more than houses and lands and food on our table. But Lord, we glory in who you are because you have made a way of escape. You have made a way of salvation for each one of us today. You are a God of impossibilities, a God who opens doors and you make a way out of no way. Lord, you opened the Red Sea for the children of Israel. Lord, you provided manna on a daily basis, a pillar of fire by night and a pillar of cloud by day. Lord, you found some of us in the darkest places. But today, we're in the house of God and we worship you and we magnify you because, Lord, if it had not been for you on our side, we don't know where we would be. And so we take today this moment to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can you say thank you with me? Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. In the precious name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture lesson today is from Psalms 107, verses 1 through 7 and 33 through 37. The great thanksgiving for deliverance from many troubles. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, those he redeemed from trouble and gathered in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some wandered in desert wastes, finding no way to an inhabited town, hungry and thirsty. Their soul fainted with them. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble. And he delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way until they reached an inhabited town. He turns rivers into desert, springs of water into thirsty ground, a fruitful land into salty waste because of the wickedness of its inhabitants. He turns a desert into pools of water and parched land into springs of water. And there he lets the hungry live and they establish a town to live in. They sow fields and plants, plant vineyards, and get a fruitful yield. The word of God for the people of God. So um, over the next three weeks, we want to talk about the, the big idea of Psalm 107 is that the, the Lord's loving kindness, can you say the Lord's loving kindness? The Lord's loving kindness bails out 
the distressed when they cease their rebellion and humbly cry out for help. Hear what I said. So God's loving kindness bails us out when we stop being hard-headed. Okay? When we stop trying to kick against the prick and do things our way regardless, God's loving kindness bails us out. There is a leadership guru by the name of Simon Sinek. I'm sure some of you have probably heard of him. He's not cynical. He's just Simon Sinek. And he wrote a book. His initial book was called Start With The Why. What is it? Start With The Why. And I think it's important for us to understand the why because oftentimes we're going through the motions of our Christianity and we're doing it for reasons that we think is the why when it's really the what, you know. I do it because we need to serve. I do it because I should worship. I do it because, because, because. And none of those things seem to be the real why. The Bible teaches us in Psalm 107 is that the redeemed should thank the Lord for his loving kindness. Did you hear what I said? We should be thanking God simply because... He is a loving, kind God. And the Bible says that the redeemed of the Lord should say so. So this is a call to thanksgiving that's focused on the Lord. It's not focused on church growth. It's not focused on the music. It's not focused on the pastors. It's not focused on the service. It's focused on the fact that God is a loving and kind and gracious God. Can you say amen? amen? The Bible says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Why? For his goodness. He's just good like that. I thank him and I praise him because, here's the why, because he's good. Now, the question would be, what is he good about? Everything, but specifically, his loving kindness. Because it says that his loving kindness is everlasting. Now, why is that important, Don? Because we don't deserve his loving kindness. I mean, when I think about the word of God, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The reality is, Helen, why would God love us so? We make this big deal about the fact that, oh, I love God and I go to church and I try to live holy and I try to do this. But it's no big deal. We should be willing to do all of those things because guess what? The question, we're sinners. We have fallen short. God hasn't done anything whatsoever to put himself in a position that he should not be loved. But we, on the other hand, by the way we have rebelled, and have run from the things of God and some of the places that God has found us in and some of the mistakes that we have made along the way in our life. And the older I get, the more I remember some of the mistakes that I've made in my life. Lord, you are a loving, kind God who has loved me unconditionally. And here I am. And the Bible teaches us that I to praise the Lord and thank the Lord in the season of thanksgiving, not because of the turkey and dressing, even though I love the turkey and dressing, not because of the mac and cheese and the collard greens and the black eyed peas that I'm giving my wish list to my wife for, <laughs> but because he's just good. See, the testimony of the redeemed, we have a responsibility to share just how good he really is, Bert. How good is he? See, we as saints sometimes, we don't want people to know just how dark our past, how ugly our mistakes or our failures. And so we actually, after a certain age, start coming to church looking holy. 
acting holy, pretending like we've never made a mistake in our lives. But the truth of the matter is, is that when we are vulnerable with other people and when we share his goodness, that it becomes a testimony to somebody else so they might be able to recognize that if God was able to do for you, maybe he can do for me. Because when I think back on my journey, and I recognize, for example, I mean, it's no secret, you know, when I think about being that, that fallen pastor, that failed pastor who went through a divorce while in ministry, I want you to know that it just hurt me to my core because... You know, life sometimes hurts you, Jan. And in that hurt, hurt people hurt people. Okay? See, and, and so therefore, we, we have to learn to make ourselves vulnerable because we don't know if we're ever going to heal, Joyce, from those things that occurred in our past or things that caused damage. And God, in his loving kindness, does not give up on us. God does not let go of us. And God, in his goodness, continues to love us, Monty. I just love the fact that he continues to love us. He continues to love us. You don't hear me. He continues to love us. He continues to put up with us. He continues to give us opportunity after opportunity after opportunity. And the audacity that I could have not to thank him, not to glory in who he is, not to magnify his name when God has been so good to me in spite of me and so good to you regardless of where you've been or where you came from or what side of the track you came from. The responsibility is to speak out because the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. What are we redeemed from? We are free from oppression, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the adversary, the Bible says, Reggie, that the devil is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. So it is no real secret that sometimes the devil gets his way and he gets his mouth and he gets his clutches in you and he holds on to you and he doesn't want to let you go. But praise God that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and it delivered me and released me and I need to stop being hard-headed and I need to accept the sacrifice that was made in my behalf. Restoration to a place of blessing. Is there anyone in here who has lost everything at some point or another? You know, I can name at least three times in a lifetime in which I literally lost everything. Everything. The first time was to a fire. Lost what I thought was everything. The second time, you know, you can make choices in your life and you think that you're bigger. You know, I, you know I, I'm going to go and I'm going to be a business mogul. I'm going to leave God. I'm going to leave the church. I'm not going to do ministry. I'm going to go do something for me. And God said, well, let's see how that works out for you. You know, and I came running back to God. God, forgive me. God, and, and, and God, in his loving kindness, said, okay, you're humbled. You're broken. And now I understand what it was like to be the prodigal son who leaves and say, give me my stuff. And how did that work out for him? He was in pig slop. But the Bible says, and the father saw him afar off, and he put a robe around him and put a ring of kinship on his finger and let him know that I love you, and they killed the fatted calf, and they celebrated his return home. That's what God does for those of us who are hard-headed and disobedient, and when you come to your senses, that he welcomes you with open arms. 
He calls us from the east and the west and north and the south. And if you ever look at biblical history and prophecy, that the evil one in biblical history, especially Old Testament, always came from the east. Trouble always came from the east. Always came from the east. And the, the tabernacle in the wilderness, the gates were always, the tabernacle was set in the west. And so they could see from afar off that evil was on his way. Wow. But for some of us, it didn't matter. I can handle it. I'm here to tell you that you're not big enough, you're not strong enough, you're not smart enough. You're not capable to handle some of the stuff that the devil wants to throw your way. Okay, I'm just trying to be real with you today. Is that all right? I want you to know that my God, my God loves us with such a great love that he's calling us from all walks of life. And no matter where you've been or what you've done, I don't care if you were strung up. I don't care if you were a drunkard. I don't care if you, you, you made just such vile mistakes that God is a God who is so loving and so good that today, if you don't harden your heart, that God will begin the rest of your life. The Lord's loving kindness bails us out. He bails out the lost, and he bails out the starving, the spiritual starving, and he provides guidance to the lost, people who are lost. Now, it's an amazing thing because some of us, and I don't know how many of you use Waze or GPS or whatever the case may be, but there's somebody in this room that no matter how much Waze is telling you to go one direction, you know better than the GPS. <laughs> We're not pointing at Monty, you know. Uh, <laughs> you, know you know, better than the GPS. And what we fail to understand about the GPS system sometimes, Wally, is that it's looking ahead. It's looking to see the dangers that are out there. It's out there letting you know where there's a traffic jam, where there's an accident, where you can avoid pitfalls and dangers in your life. And that's the way God sits on his throne, is that God is directing our path and he's looking ahead of, it, uh, looking ahead of us where we can avoid some dangers. And we need to stop thinking we know better than God. Because we can only see what is here and what's right here in front of us. But God in his infinite wisdom, God in his all-knowingness, knows what's ahead and how to protect us long before the enemy gets to us. It's for that in which I am grateful. It's for that in which I praise the Lord. It's for that that I'm thankful. It's for that that I know, Lord, I may not understand what you're doing in my life, but I trust you because I know that you are loving, you are kind, and you are grace-filled, and God, you want the best for me. I know the plans I have for you. Plans for you to prosper. Plans for you to have a future plans for you to have a hope. See, some of us are what I call the restless ones. And we need divine rest for our human restlessness. The ones who wander about from one place to another or from one job to another job, from one marriage to another marriage to another marriage, or filled with questions and seeking to find where the answer lies. And there are a lot of these people here today. We can't find answers. And we have the nerve to get mad at God because we can't find the answers. Looking for something, but they can't find it. They keep wandering from place to place. And let me tell you something, that if you don't handle the issues you have in your life here, Am I in my box yet? There we are. Outside of my box. If you, if you don't handle the issues in your life here and you get mad and upset and say, well, I'm leaving. I'm going over here and you haven't dealt with you. Then all you're going to do is bring the same mess to the new place that you go to and create a new one. Because if you're not a part of the solution, maybe, just maybe, maybe. You're a part of the problem. Amen. 
And so the word is teaching us that no matter how difficult you may be, or we may be, that God is good. That all the time, God is good. And he's long-suffering. And he's lovingly kind to us. And in closing, because this is three parts, so I can take my time. Um, <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> uh, when you're raising your children, isn't it amazing how we can see danger and they don't see it? You know, they really believe that they can leap tall buildings in a single bound. And, and in this superhero generation, you know, and comic strips and whatever, Pete, I was one of those, and I would put my Superman towel around my neck. Come on now. And at first I would jump from couch to couch before Daddy got home because I bet not jump from couch to couch when Daddy was home. Or from bed to bed, and, and then I went from bed to bed to dresser to dresser and tried to climb the walls and, and then go outside and I'd walk the, the, brick, the brick wall and, and every step got more dangerous along the way. Because we think if we get away with something, that there's really no harm in it. But the truth of the matter is that the way the adversary works, that he lets you get away with it 99 times out of 100. And the hundredth time, he turns the lights on and pulls back the cover and says, I got you! And the truth of the matter is, he really did get us. I think God in his loving kindness, says my grace is sufficient unto you. That's why I thank the Lord. That's why I praise his name. Because, Roger, I've been through something. And I know that God's good. Wallen, I tried to hurt myself, even when I didn't know I was trying to hurt myself. But God is good. And his mercy endures forever. God bless you as we prepare for our communion service. In the form of a man, by the name of Jesus, God showed up to 12 disciples. There might have been more in the room. We're not sure how many people were in that upper room. We know they were the ones who were closest to Jesus. The ones who were the closest. The night before he died. The night before he was handed over to be killed, I should say. And Jesus prepared a meal. He prepared something special. Today we get to remember that. Today... We get to recreate that. Today, we get to receive the grace of God in this meal. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image. You breathed into us the breath of life. And when we turned away and our love failed, your love has remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity 
You made a covenant to be our sovereign God, and you spoke to us through the prophets. And so with your people and all the company of heaven, we, join, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit, Lord, anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, he fed the hungry, and he ate with us, Lord, with sinners. And by the baptism of his suffering, his death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from being slaves to sin and death, and you made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended. He promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself, all of himself, up for us. He took the bread, and he gave thanks to you. And he broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, took the cup and he gave thanks to you and then he gave it to the disciples and said drink from this all of you this is my, my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. And so, as we remember our Lord and Savior, as we remember these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and a living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and vine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ so that we may be the body of Christ redeemed by his blood for this world. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit, in your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And all God's people said, Amen. that are helping with communion. This table is a table set by Jesus Christ. We understand it to be hosted by our Lord and Savior, not by us, not by our church, not by this building, and not by those wonderful people who help prepare this table for us. But this table is an open invitation. It's an invitation for each and every one of us to be reunited by receiving the love of the Lord in this place. For God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. As we prepare, we'll have two stations, one by intinction where you'll take a piece of bread and dip it in the cup, and another with individual pieces served with individual cups on the other side just a moment I'll invite you all to come as you feel called come with intention come with purpose for God is meeting us in this place
And God's people said, Amen. as you feel called.
Let us close this time in prayer. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your Spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We move now to a time of offering, of giving in a different way. I'd like to just remember for a moment all those saints and all those people that came before us and all of the places that have led us to be here together. We, thank, we are thankful for all of the giving and the legacy that has come from those that gave before us. And we remember that now as we give and continue to give to our Lord and Savior. Come as you feel called this morning. stand as we sing our doctology. in prayer. God of all generations, as we worship today, we offer our whole selves to you, all that we have and all that we are. Like your saints who have gone before us, we pray that you will help us to be bold in our mission and in our witness. May we who have been given so much free, give freely ministering in your compassion to the multitudes near and far, so that one day we may stand amid the multitude that gathers at your heavenly throne. We pray this in the name of our Savior and Redeemer, Christ our Lord. Amen. Um, as you're aware, on next Friday is Veterans Day, and we would like to take a moment, not only on next week, but today, to celebrate all of our veterans if you served. I'm gonna invite you to please stand and we wanna take a moment to recognize you today. Are there any veterans among us today? Thank you so much. We thank you for your service, both in the world as well as in the church. Thank you and we love you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, and also for those of you who are online who are, who are veterans, we just want to say uh, that we miss you today and that we love you as well. Uh, also, some dates I need you to keep in mind that on November 19th, what day did I say? 19th. November 19th, that is what, two weeks from now? 
two weeks is our all church conference, okay? All church conference where we will have joint church, all of our worship communities will be together. And what we are going to do is that is the time in which we conduct our business of the church. So after worship, we are going to have a meal together, and then we're going to um, go into what is called our all-church conference, and our district superintendent will be present and presiding over that conference with us. Now, what's going to be unique and different this year is that on next week, you're going to get your all-church conference booklet, okay? So instead of having to come and read and vote on issues at that time, we want to give you a week to look it over, read it, be able to call us and ask, ask any questions so that we can go over it because we want to make sure that things are done decently and in order so that nobody is lost. Amen? Amen. So we're just doing our best to try and communicate. Uh, also, I want to share with you another date. That is December 16th. What date did I say? December 16th. That is going to be the Jingle Jangle Jubilee Christmas Party. No, community Christmas Party, okay? We are having a Christmas party right here on the church grounds. And there is a lot of planning going in it. So it's not just for the membership. It is for the preschool parents and their children. It's for all of our worship communities. It's for our community partners. We will have the Legal Aid Society and their board here as well. Uh, we're going to be reaching out to the mayor's office as well, asking them to come and attend because we want everybody to know that we're not dead here. Come on now. And we're going to have fun. There will be prizes and food upon food. And there will be fellowship. It will be decorated not only in the church, but this courtyard is going to be decorated as well. We will have gift giveaways, all right? And we're going to have some very special gifts with opportunity for you to take something home. Amen. And so... Uh, and we're also praying that we can make a way to get some snow made. That's right. Really, we're trying, okay? We're trying. Uh, but get ready to come and have a good time on December 16th. And the time is going to be from 3, 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. And we're doing it that early because for those who don't drive in the dark, we want you to get some time, okay? So 3 to 4 or 3 to 5, and you can go home early, but we want everyone to at least start with us, okay? Sound good? All right. So we want to celebrate. We want to celebrate because God truly has been good to us. Our church campus, I don't know if you know this, you know, and the parking lot even looked better, but somebody, even after it was cleaned up, you know, they dropped stuff out there. But I hope you notice that the campus looks clean. And we're doing our best to get up the, the stains, and we're organizing things. And Derek has worked so hard getting things in place. Come on now. And... Um, and sacrifices made by trustees and, and June and that committee so that not only are we presentable, but we are workable. And I am so appreciative for their sacrifices and all that is being done so that we can be better together. Amen. I hope you notice that there are also signs that were put up today where Spanish Ministries is in transition to our campus here today as well. So we have... So so much to be grateful for, and, uh, and so good to see, uh, you know, a, a good crowd here at church this morning as well. What a blessing. Um, also, I'd like to remind you that during the week, uh, again, if you don't have the church app, I'm asking you to do that, because that could spare us some of the time we have to spend at the end as we communicate via online and through the church app, so it will come to your phone what meetings are taking place throughout the week like our hymnal study, what's in your hymnal on Tuesday night at 7 on Zoom. Thursday is food distribution, uh, both at West Campus as well as downtown here at 10 a.m. The Friday, preschool is closed in observance of Veterans Day. And then obviously we come back to worship on next week. Um, also for November 19th, I meant to tell you all church conference. 
Uh, Leah, if I say it wrong, let me know. But I think that we have, um, we're asking everyone to bring either salad and or dessert. And I think we're going to take care of drink. And yours truly is going to cook the entree. Okay? <laughs> Amen. So we're going to... Yours truly is going to cook the, <laughs> the, the, the entree. We, we, we're going to do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm kidding. Um, and, and so we're going to have a wonderful time because it's, it's important that we fellowship together, that we play together, that we laugh together, that we cry together because that's forming community. Amen. So this afternoon at 4 o'clock, I believe, the Filipino group is, uh, we will be in Bible study this afternoon. We're going to be at Leah's home. Yes. Okay, just raise your hand who Leah is, and, and if you need an address, go to her. Amen. God bless you. We love you. And uh, thank you for this time of worship together. So as we leave this place today, we go in power, we go in peace. We go as the property of the God Almighty. Father, we ask that you will guide our path and let us be a blessing to others. And now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be majesty, dominion, and power, now and forevermore, in Christ's name. Amen and amen. Please be seated. Mm -hmm. 